thank you very much. As a big crowd of people. Well, hello, Pickens, and hello to South Carolina. It's great to be with you. We've had great success together. I don't know if you know it, but those crowds are going all the way back into whatever the hell street you have back there. Whatever that street is, they've passed it. There's nowhere else I'd rather be to kick off the 4th of July weekend than right here on Main Street with thousands of proud, hardworking South Carolina patriots who believe in God, family, and country. Do we all believe in God, family, and country? I think so. Let me begin by wishing each and every one of you a very happy Independence Day. It's a big day. We need our independence back, to be honest with you. Nearly two and a half centuries ago, brave American patriots risked their lives for the majestic cause of freedom. Their names entered history as heroes and legends. They are indeed legends. Uh, they want to uh, delete our legends. We're not letting them delete our legends. We're not letting them delete General Pickens, either. That I can tell you. There will be no deletion of General Pickens. But names like George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, Patrick Henry, and South Carolina's own Francis Marion, and the great general, the great general Andrew Pickens. He's become very famous today, I have to be honest. This thing is all over the world. They have it broadcast. Look at all the fake news back there. It's all over the world. I hope they don't go back to their spreads where they're all losing lots of money because they don't have credibility anymore and such. Say, let's look at Andrew Pickens. Let me see. What did he do wrong? Let's change the name. Let's change. Don't let him change anything. Don't let him change. When they want to change the name of George Washington, they've taken the name of George Washington off over 100 schools throughout the country. These people are sick. When they want to get rid of the Jefferson Memorial, that's not happening. But today, everything having to do with those courageous Americans who fought for us and sacrificed so strongly is indeed being destroyed under crooked Joe Biden, and he is crooked as hell, isn't it? You know, I've been hitting him much differently than I have because I've always respected the office. And then when they indicted me for nothing, I said, now the gloves are off. Now we have to say it like it is. He's a crook. Under crooked Joe Biden, I never called him that. I took the name away from Hillary Clinton. We call her beautiful Hillary now, and because I don't lose crooked Hillary, now it's crooked Joe, because it's a much more appropriate name right now for this man who's just destroying our country. Under crooked Joe Biden, millions and millions of illegal aliens are streaming across our border. Main Street is being crushed by catastrophic inflation. Our Constitution is being ripped to shreds. Our children are being taught to hate our great heroes. Hate them. You're going to hate Abraham Lincoln. You're going to hate George Washington. Men are competing in women's sports. How about that one? Murders, gang members, and bloodthirsty killers are being set loose on innocent people. And Joe Biden is stumbling us into the brink of World War III because he has no idea what the hell he's doing. While starting, and when you think of, when you think of what's going on with Russia, you know, Russia now is at a point where they better make the right decision because we're on a course toward World War III, and the weaponry is impossible. If you ever saw the kind of power that — the kind of destructive force — and we have a man who's grossly incompetent, who's representing us. And if you look at the leaders of the world, these people are at the top of their game — President Xi and Kim Jong-un, and I could name almost every country. But we have somebody that's not at all. 
but while stating twice this week as an example that Russia is losing the war to Iraq. Twice. Not, you know, you can make mistakes on occasion. Even Lindsey down here, Senator Lindsey Graham. We love Senator Graham. We're gonna act, we're gonna love him. We're gonna love him. I know, it's half and half. But when I need some of those liberal votes, he's always there to help me get them, okay? We got some pretty liberal people, but he's good. He's good. We know the good ones. We know the bad ones, too. We got some real bad ones. But even he makes mistakes on occasion. But you can't make a mistake by calling Ukraine Iraq. And then you certainly can't do it a second time, because there's something wrong. With the help of everyone here today, we're going to win the South Carolina primary seven months from now. Big. And on Election Day 2024, we're going to evict we are going to evict crooked Joe Biden from the White House. We're going to bring our country back. We are going to take back our country. We are going to make America great again. That's what we need. Make America great again. The fake news media has finally started to admit what we all knew. Joe Biden is the most corrupt president in American history by far. It's not even close. He's a criminal and a liar who sold his office to foreign countries and many other people. You take a look at what's going on. All of the stuff goes into the stuff he calls. It goes into family pockets. And it comes from many cases, very bad third world actors. And nobody thought they were going to get caught with all of their phony corporations that they set up. The only problem is those people don't like to report on it, but they're actually having to start. It's very interesting. I'm just not sure I want to run against anybody else. I sort of like this one. And by the way, we're leading him by a lot. But just think, just think of the massive Biden corruption unveiled in the past few weeks alone. According to representatives, James Comer and Jim Jordan, who are doing a fantastic job, by the way. At least nine Biden family members were paid vast sums of money through 20 different shell companies for no legitimate reason at all. They can't figure it out. While Crooked Joe was vice president, he was using that as a cash machine. In addition, we learned the FBI is explosive evidence that Joe Biden took bribes from Ukraine, yet the corrupt FBI, it's out of control, not only covered it up, they stayed silent while crazy Nancy Pelosi, little Adam Schiff, how about that beauty, little Adam Schiff, and the radical Democrats impeached me, they impeached me, but that was just the beginning, because they also indicted me a couple of years later for asking questions about the Biden bribery scam. Just happened to ask. It turned out I was right. This is a sick nest of people that needs to be cleaned out and cleaned out immediately. Turned out I was right. It turned out I was right. I had to go through two impeachments, and I was right on both of them, and it's been proven. And especially with the laptop from hell, it's been proven. It's been right there, right in front of their eyes. Last week, an IRS whistleblower revealed that Crooked Joe sat in a room while his son, Hunter, messaged a Chinese Communist Party top official. And he said, I quote, I am sitting here with my father, Sleepy Joe. And we would like to, and by the way, he may not be as sleepy as we thought, you know, based on all this stuff. And we would like to understand with the commitment made, what has happened? Why has it not been fulfilled? Why haven't you sent us the money? Tell the director that I would like to resolve this right now before it gets out of hand, and now means tonight. I didn't know he was a tough guy. He is, they are with, with our money. They're not with our nation because they're giving it away to other countries. And if I get a call or text from anyone involved and this other than you, Zhang, top person, 
or the chairman, I will make certain that between the man sitting next to me, that's Dad. Hi, Dad. Remember, he said he was the, he said he was the smartest person he's ever met. By the way, at some time, does, does Joe Biden say, you know, the sun thing's just not working out very well? At some point, but it won't be, it won't matter if the press doesn't catch it. Remember that. But the man sitting next to me and every person he knows, you will regret not following my, re my rejection and direction. I'm sitting here waiting for the call, and he says he wants it right now. I'm sitting, waiting for the call with my father. Within 10 days, the Bidens collected $5.1 million from China for no reason whatsoever. They didn't do anything. Once again, Trump was right. Trump was right. They have these hats. Trump was right about everything. I don't know about everything, but we were right about a lot, Marjorie, right? A lot. Joe Biden is corrupt, and Joe Biden is a very compromised president. He's being paid off just like a common criminal gets paid off, just a more sophisticated manner and much larger numbers. But he's totally protected by the Department of Injustice and by the fake news media, which has been weaponized to a degree we have never, ever seen before. This is a crime 100 times bigger than Watergate, and they just don't want to write about it. When I get back in office, I will appoint a real special prosecutor to investigate every detail of the Biden crime family of corruption. So incredible. And again, out of respect for the office of president, I would never be talking this way, even knowing a lot of this stuff. I have too much respect for the office. But once they do what they did to me and to you, by doing what they did so corrupt, I said, now the gloves are off from that standpoint. What they've done is so terrible. So I'll speak differently than I would have three weeks ago. Because you never heard me use this kind of language. I wouldn't want to. Out of respect for our country and for the office, but uh, we, we really have no choice. These people are sick. They're sick people. But despite all of this, they go after me for the Presidential Records Act. Well, that's what they should be looking at, because everything I did was under the Presidential Records Act. We have a thug prosecutor named Smith, Jack Smith. He's a thug. He's had many losses. He's destroyed many lives, and they put him in charge. In the meantime, what about Biden's records? This guy has 1,850 boxes. He has boxes stored in Chinatown in D.C. Rough place, by the way. He has them stored at Penn, where China has paid them almost $100 million. China paid over 100, almost $100 million. And nobody wants to even talk about that. He took classified information when he was a senator. And even Democrat senators say, you can't do that. Charging a former president of the United States under the Espionage Act of 1917. Espionage, me, espionage. As Putin said, you are the most vicious president ever. There's never been a president that did this to me, and yet I got along with him, isn't it not? Don't forget. I ended his pipeline first day. I ended it. I said, no more pipeline in the middle of construction. Biden came in and he approved it. I gave javelins. Remember this? I gave javelins to Ukraine. They were the anti-tank missiles, and they knocked the hell out of Russia. But I got along with Putin, and it's good to get along with people on the other side. It's very good. The Espionage Act of 1917 is an act for a crime so heinous that only the death penalty would do is one of the most outrageous and vicious legal theories ever put in an American court of law. There's never been anything like this. And by the way, almost all other presidents took the documents with them. You look at Barack Hussein Obama. Did anyone ever hear of Barack Hussein Obama? <laughs> the Bushes took documents. Jimmy Carter took documents. You don't like Bush. Yeah, I don't understand that. I mean, he got us into the Middle East, didn't he, huh? Got us into the Middle East. Ten trillion dollars, that's right. No more war unless we need it. We, we have the greatest military now in the world. I rebuilt it. Of course, we shouldn't have given 
$85 billion worth to Afghanistan, losing 13 great soldiers, leaving Americans behind. That's what showed the weakness, and that's one of the reasons, I think maybe a primary reason, that Putin went in and that President Xi of China is talking pretty big. The Espionage Act has been used to go after traitors and spies. It has nothing to do with a former president legally keeping documents. As a president, the law that applies to this case is not the Espionage Act. It's vicious, never used before. Never, it's only been used on me over boxes that I'm allowed to have the Espionage Act. But the Presidential Records Act, which is not even mentioned in this horrible and vicious and stupid, according to very talented lawyers, 44-page indictment, under the Presidential Records Act, which is a civil situation, not a criminal law. I had every right to have these documents, personal belongings and boxes. I had absolute right to have them. Joe Biden didn't, and Mike Pence didn't, and neither did certain other people that weren't presidents, because they were not covered by the Presidential Records Act of 1978, relatively new compared to others. But these scoundrels and thugs in our weaponized government are corrupt, just like the president is corrupt. So they decided only to come after me. Only to come after me. It's an amazing thing. It's called election interference, and it's backfired on them. Because my poll numbers are much higher now than they were three months ago. And we were still leading by a lot three months ago, but now we're really leading. A lot of people are going to start dropping out. Watch, you know, they're in a solid one. One of them had a zero with an arrow to the left. What does that mean? Can you have a zero with an arrow pointing left? That means they got less than zero. I guess it's probably a double voter. You know, these people that vote two, three, four times, I guess that's what they're referring to. They have zero with an arrow pointing left. The crucial legal precedent is laid out in the most important case ever on this subject, known as the Clinton Sox case. You know why? Because he took things out in his socks. Bill Clinton. After leaving the White House, Bill Clinton kept 79 audio tapes in his socks and his sock drawer. Well, unusual place, right? Of these tapes, some of the most important conversations in government were had. Talk to the leaders of many, many big and great and strong and countries, enemies of ours, a lot of them. Not only was Bill Clinton never even considered for criminal prosecution based on the tapes and all of the other things he took, but the tapes in particular, they were brutal. But when he was sued for them in a civil case, he won the case. Judge, in other words, they said he could do it. Judge Amy Berman Jackson's decision states, I quote, under the statutory scheme established by the Presidential Records Act, the decision to segregate personal materials from presidential records is made by the president during the president's term and in his sole and complete discretion. You're getting this. In other words, it's a phony deal. Any normal administration, even an opposing one, would consider that to be the end of the case, but not the corrupt Biden regime, because they want to do this for election interference. He's getting his ass kicked in the polls, and he needs to do this for election interference, which is their new form of cheating. It's actually a pretty old form, but it's new to this country to the extent that they're doing it. The Sox decision also states, quote, the National Archives and Records Administration, or NARA, radical left group, you know they have, NARA has the Constitution flagged, red flag, you know that? And they have not only the Constitution red flag, they have the Bill of Rights because they say they're da dangerous documents. This is what we're dealing with. But they don't have the authority to designate. Think of that. NARA does not have the authority to designate materials as presidential records. They're the ones coming after me. NARA does not have the tapes in question, and NARA lacks any right, duty, or means to seize control of them. This is the decision of the judge. The president enjoys unconstrained authority. This is, again, the decision of a respected judge to make decisions regarding the disposition of documents. Neither the archivist 
nor Congress has the authority to veto the President's decision. In other words, the President alone, not the Vice President, not allowed, not other officers, and not the senators. When he was a senator, he took a lot of classified information, and you're not allowed to do that. The Presidential Records Act does not confer any at all mandatory or even discretionary authority on the archivist to classify records. Under the statute, just to finish up, this responsibility is left solely to the President of the United States, not all these other people that say, oh, he kept some documents. What I do, I do legally. In other words, whatever documents a President decides to take with him, he has the absolute right to do so. That's the law, and it couldn't be more clear. I don't think it could be more clear than that. Even the New York Times, of all papers, in a major article said that when it comes to asking for documents, I guarantee you this reporter got fired, from the former presidents, the only power that NARA has is to say, pretty please, this is the Times, pretty please, could we have them? Quote, asking nicely is about all they can do, and yet they reported me to the Department of Justice for criminal prosecution. So there it is. Nothing like this has ever happened. The Espionage Act has never been used before. These are sick people. These are degenerates that are running our country, and our country is going to hell. And I just might add briefly, you know, right next door, because these are all Democrats, and they're all in total contact. They're in total contact with the Justice Department. That includes Manhattan. That includes Atlanta, Georgia, one of the most unsafe per capita places anywhere in this country. It's number one or number two. Worse than Chicago. You don't know that. People are leaving Atlanta. And we loved Atlanta. We loved Georgia. Georgia was — we did great in Georgia. Unfortunately, bad things happen. We can't let any of that stuff happen again, and we're not going to let it. But in right next door in Georgia, the racist district attorney goes after me for a perfect phone call even more perfect than the call I made to Ukraine. Even more perfect. She's got the worst per capita crime record in the country. Murders — think of this — murderers are allowed to get away with murder. They're allowed to get away with murder. They don't even go after him. The only one they go after is Trump. Let's see, didn't he have a phone call? And when you think about that call, many lawyers were in that call. That was a call made when I was president, and I was protesting the election results in Georgia. And they had numerous — many. They had Secretary of State on, Raffensperger. And they had many lawyers on the call, some ours, but many of them theirs. Not one person protested that call. There was no problem with that call. They didn't say, sir, I'm sorry, please rephrase. It was only a long time afterwards. They said, let's see, Trump made a phone call, didn't he? Well, we actually made another one that was so perfect that they refused to even show it or report it, but we have a copy of it. It was a perfect call. These were perfect calls. These were calls where you're questioning the validity and the safety of elections. And it's a disgrace that they're allowed to even think about it. But not one person protested until long after that call. And if there was something wrong with that call, I am not a stupid person. Number one, I'm an honest person, so I wouldn't do it anyway. But when people are on the phone, including many lawyers, do you think — many people were on that phone. Many, many people. Do you think I'm going to say what they'd like to have? But it, the problem is, it's not borne out. I will tell you what is borne out. The call was supposedly taped in the state of Florida. And in Florida, you're not allowed to do — you know, that's a two-party state. In other words, you're not allowed to tape phone calls. They taped the phone call. To show you how nice they are, they taped the phone call, and you're not allowed. So that is the real crime here. They had a two-party state with somebody taping the call, supposedly from Florida. The Bidens took in millions and millions of dollars from Ukraine, from Russia, and from China. And now Joe has given China the green light as they open up — not even believable — military installations in Cuba just 90 miles off our coast. Think of that. And that will end as soon as I'm president. China will be leaving. They will be leaving. 
They will be leaving, and we had a very good relationship. You didn't hear about Taiwan. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the Macad TV family. Please like and share Macad TV. We love you all. Please support Macad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.